Hi, my name is Robert Stacy. I'm the head of global sales for a company called Iodine. We're here at CES in the Four Systems uh, stand, uh, showcasing our new product, the Iodine Pro Mini, the world's first smart drive. One of the things about um, SSD technology today is that they are all uh, limited in terms of their actual performance. Um, basically, uh, one of the things that happens is that when you plug them in, um, they give a very good start, and then within 30 seconds, uh, they basically start to thermally throttle and basically s losing much of the initial performance that they originally had. So, so you, you are able to provide the best performance SSD in the world? Yes, so by using uh, two chips in the device called air jets, which are made by Fror, uh, basically it's a new type of uh, cooling, so it's a solid state cooling device that we use within, within the drive, and essentially it allows us to get a sustained data rate of over three gigs a second, um, from uh, start to finish, you know, so if you're basically copying large amounts of data for hours and hours, you'll get the same data performance throughout without any fall off at all. So professionals who need big amounts of data, video editors or all kinds of, you can imagine, people working with important data, but a lot of it. Yes, so basically any content professional, such as you know people who are creating video in the field, obviously large, chunky files, um, you know, large amounts of uh, capacity taking up the entire hard drive, you'll be able to transfer that reliably and sustainably over that period of time. So one of the things that Iodine resolved to do was to use the four chips inside of it, the air jet, um, to combat the thermal problem. But we also wanted to solve several other problems. One of those being is that why can't personal storage devices have the same features as your data center? So basically, what we're introducing with this product is a RAID 6 AES-256 encrypted hard drive, um, SSD, um, that has uh, pass keys and data separate from each other, um, and a NFC chip inside so that I can send credentials to a user uh, on their iPhone, and they can basically tap to unlock the device. Um, that is a pretty in innovative feature, but in addition to that, there's also a Find My circuit within the device that allows the drive to be geolocated. And so that if it becomes lost, um, you can uh, remotely wipe out the drive if, if needed, or you can actually dynamically change the digital label that's on the device uh, to a, like a UPS call tag or to some sort of, you know, my drive is lost, please call me at the following number. Um, all of these devices um, are manageable in the sense that um, we have a back-end system called Fleet Management, which basically is a cloud service that allows you to manage you know, multiple devices. So if you have 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000 of these devices, you can manage them like a data center, essentially. So you can provision each of the drives, uh, you can uh, partition them, you can set up user rights and permissions uh, for them, and basically uh, audit and, and manage them like like you would want any uh, of your media assets or data assets to be managed. Um, and so the way to think about iodine in addition to making this drive for any personal uh, use, uh, we are essentially a distributed data center um, instead of a centralized one. Uh, when you talk about RAID 6, that means multiple uh, SSD sectors or what you call it, uh, uh, components in there, right? So it's a hardware-based RAID, um, and it's obviously not just a single M.2 SSD, so there are multiple uh, uh, chips that at, can at comprise... It's, a, it's like a bunch. It must be a bunch, or RAID 6? Yeah, that's that correct. two failure? What so you mean? can have up to uh, three failures before you would actually lose your data. So essentially, one of the things that we do with our technology is our RAID 6, when uh, if there is a chip failure, it actually auto-reconfigures the device uh, to be a fully functioning RAID 5 at the same level of data performance. And so uh, you, you're basically still protected and you're working at full speed. And then if you were to lose a, you know, a second chip, you would just have a degraded uh, RAID 5 uh, situation. But you know, when you're working at full performance, you're basically getting 3.2 gigs a second sustained read and writes. And right under there, the floor system that you have going on here, uh, the storage is being held cool the whole time, sustained speed forever? That is correct. So that is really one of the main goals is that, you know, when you're working with, uh, you know, 
data devices, you want them to transfer data and you want them to do it reliably and sustainably. And so that's one of the key things that we provide to the More than 3,000 megabytes per second? Correct, sustained. For, for an indefinite period of time. As long as you keep it charged. Oh, but right. actually, when you connect it to a laptop, it yeah, gets Yeah, it's just power. bus powered. So you know, you're basically operating off the bus. And so the, what the Fro technology, you know, the air jets uh, basically provided to us is a much larger you know, thermal budget, uh, which allows us to give the sustained data rates as, long, as well as uh, being able to uh, provide all of these additional smart features with the, within the device. RAID and then portable SSD is kind of a uh, this kind of RAID is never seen before. That is correct. It is an innovation, and that's why we call it the smart drive. What's the storage capacity that one can hope? So um, the two uh, initial capacities we're releasing are 4 terabytes and 8 terabytes, and that's a usable capacity with the RAID 6. Um, and the uh, pre-order pricing for the 4 terabyte is $14.95 and $21.95 for the uh, 8 terabyte. So this is uh, for all the serious professionals out there something to consider yeah so if you you know you want to find out more about this you can go to our website and look for the product called the iodine pro mini the smart drive and it's got an e-ink display that, that shows correct. for example storage available that is correct and that has a QR code right now and a barcode, but you could what what could be happening on this e-ink? Yeah, lots of different things. So this uh, e-ink display is completely customizable by the user. This is done through the fleet management system, uh, the, through the iodine utility, uh, and basically allows you to customize the um, the label. Um, and so you can have your project name, your logo. Um, you know, you can create a barcode for an asset tag, uh, for example. So as you check in uh, media in and out, uh, you can you know basically manage it uh, that way. And um, one of the things is if the device becomes lost in lost mode, you can dynamically change the uh, the label so that you know you could change it to like a UPS call tag for someone to mail it back to you. Or you know, please call me. You know, this is my number. You know, if you find this device, you know, for a big reward or something like that. So my home is a complete mess with all the stickers I put on my hard drives and stuff, and try to remember what's on it. It's really important to kind of tag correctly whose hard drive it is, right? Who, whose SSD it is, right? And it, let's imagine you have a big company that buys this for everybody. Yeah, so this could, be it is. this could be customized to every single individual. So that, yeah, as I say, the label is customizable. So you could say, you know, this is you know, Johannes's drive or Mark's drive or Dave's drive. Um, so that's you know really easy to do with the, with the system. And one of the other things too is that if you uh, disconnect the drive and put it on the shelf, this e-ink display will last up to five years before you would uh, need to recharge it. Nice. All right. How soon is it available? So we will be shipping this uh, product in uh, early Q2, basically April. Um, and we are taking orders uh, for this product today. OK, so one of the key scenarios this is designed for is that there are a lot of people who have to work in remote locations on the edge and need to generate large amounts of data. Uh, and they also need to um, uh, have content security. So how do you maintain that if you don't have internet? So one of the things that we have within the device is that we have a passkey enclave uh, and an NFC chip. So I can pre-deploy my equipment out to the field and essentially um, pick the users of those technology of the drives later, and I can provision them uh, to their iPhone. Uh, with the credentials so that when they go out to the middle of nowhere where that device is, they can basically tap and unlock the uh, drive using their phone uh, because the credentials are there. Uh, once they're done using the device, I can revoke the credential. How does it work to tap to unlock? Um, just like using your iPhone, like if you were like doing a credit card transaction or you know what what There's happened. an NFC in there? Yeah, so there's an NFC in the device. And basically, there's a you know app clip within the within the phone to be able to do that. Nice, because some people maybe work on an oil rig and capture a terabyte of sensor data right, or some, correct. something, exactly. and they need to have safe data. Correct. So you know, essentially, you know, why the device is in transit, it you know, it can't be accessed by anyone. 
And how reliable is it, like it for drop proof and all that stuff? Yeah, so it's been drop tested and uh, you know would be you know considered a ruggedized device uh, in the way that you would want to have it in those types of environments. But not waterproof, dust proof. Um, actually, that's one of the key features of the uh, air intake system. It's a very dense uh, filter, um, so it um, is able to uh, be water resistant. So you know we have uh, customers who would be working in uh, in uh, environments where uh, you have uh, moisture, uh, for example, um, and of course, dusty environments. So one of the really neat things about this is that the filter being so dense can detect pressure changes. And so if the uh, pressure changes in such a way that it starts to impact the uh, airflow, it will detect that, auto-reverse the airflow, and self-clean itself. And what do we see on the sides? So they're, they're air intakes? That's correct. So these are air intakes on the side, and then at the top and the bottom of the device, uh, we basically have uh, air exhaust. So air comes in from the side, uh, and then hot air comes out the top and bottom of the device. And how's the noise? So basically, it's essentially white noise. It's basically 21 dB, so basically undetectable. So you know, if you're a videographer, for example, um, you can basically you know work on set, you could have it mounted onto a camera. And I should point out that if you're using USB output cameras, such as those made by Red Cinema or Blackmagic or you know, like a Fuji GFX, uh, those have USB outputs. And so you can actually use this as a direct recording device because the input on this uh, device is both USB-C and Thunderbolt. So if you have a USB-C output camera, you can directly record to this device and basically have a RAID 6 encrypted recording right off the bat. And then that's safe recording for very important productions, and you pull it out of the system, give it to the editor. That's correct. That's also authenticates, gets access so you don't leak the footage from the next that is uh, correct. Marvel movie or something. I exactly. And so it, it's designed for a lot of these types of scenarios, or like you know, if you're covering sports and you're working in the locker room and you know you're hearing a lot of off-color stuff that you wouldn't necessarily you know want the public to you know hear or something like that. Yeah. And maybe there would be a different case that kind of fits security to the camera so it doesn't fall off or something? So iodine um, you know, makes a variety of products that you know, sort of work in all kinds of different ecosystems. So we're really well known for building uh, high quality accessories for our products. So we anticipate having a variety of those uh, for this uh, product. And you know, even uh, initially, we're going to be shipping some very high performance. When these are shipping today, we're shipping very high performance Thunderbolt cables that are active power. Um, so they have a 240 watt uh, power uh, connection, um, and we make a variety of distances up to and including 50 meter fiber optic active power. What do we see here, those little lights? Yeah, so these are a whole bunch of indicator lights. Um, so uh, one of the things that you can do with these uh, lights is like, if you're looking for a device and you're in an environment, you know, so the, the Find My, if you're looking to find one of your devices, um, it can trigger an audible alarm, of course, uh, but those can be toggled off, you know, because maybe you're in an environment where having an auditory alarm isn't okay. Um, so this light could be used to, you know, blink on and off so that you so can... So it's got it Bluetooth? Um, yes, yeah, so it's a Find My Bluetooth uh, in it, yes. All right. Cool. That's a f act feature packed, maybe the best SSD in the world, right? We certainly think it's the smartest. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you.